Good morning, everybody. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Welcome to this special service where we get to sing some of our favourite Christmas songs and where we can hear and experience the story of what happened on that first Christmas. As we'll be singing a little bit, we'll actually be singing a lot, it might be a little bit much to stand for all of the songs. So look out for the, for the cues and the prompts on each song as to whether to, to stand if you're able to sing or to just remain seated as we sing. Love is the, the wick that is central to the candle. Love is the wick given by God, the flame that burns continually. Love is the wick given by God that burns in the world. Love is the wick given by God that burns in our hearts. In previous weeks, we've already, we've already lit, lit the candles of hope and peace and joy, and so we light the candle of love. Let us pray. Holy God, source of light, shine in our lives and in your world with your unending love. Through Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. So, if we're able, let us stand and sing our first carol, O come all ye faithful.
and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. In a covertly responsible way, let us share God's peace with one another. Those who are young and who are young at heart. Hello. How are you all? Here comes Lily. Hello, Lily. Hello, Mark. This is for young and young at heart. So this is for all of us, really. So... At Christmas time, we, we seem to focus, don't we, on, on the birth of Jesus, which is good. We should do that, really. But we see the shepherds, and we look at our nativity behind us, the shepherds and the, the magi who followed the star, and also, of course, Jesus, the, the Mary and Joseph, and, and the birth of Jesus. But the story of the nativity behind us started long before that, and it started with Mary. Mary was a poor girl living in a rural village in Roman-occupied uh, Judea. Everyone around her discounted her, but God didn't discount her. I'm certain that God saw Mary as someone who had strength and determination, and she would need these qualities to do what God was about to ask her to do. So let's close our eyes if we, if we would like to, and let's listen to the story as we, uh, as we hear that, uh, that the angel come to, visit, to come to visit Mary. So let's, let's listen to the story. And I'm reading from and you'll hear other voices too, from Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to a town in Galilee named Nazareth. He for a young woman promised in marriage to a man named Joseph, who was a descendant of King David. Her name was Mary. The angel came and said, Peace be with you. The Lord is with you. Mary was deeply troubled by the angel's message and she wondered what his words meant. The angel said to her, Don't be afraid, Mary. God has been gracious to you. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will make him king as his ancestor David was and he will be the king of the descendants of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How can this happen? I am not married. The Holy Spirit will come on you, and God's power will rest upon you. For this reason, the Holy Child will be called the Son of God. Remember your love of Elizabeth? It is said that she cannot have children. But she herself is now six months pregnant, even though she is very old. For there is nothing that God can do. I am the Lord's servant. May it happen to me as you have said. So soon after this, Mary went and visited her cousin Elizabeth, who was almost getting ready to give birth to her own son, John. Remember, in the last few weeks, we've been hearing the story of John the Baptist. So John the Baptist was actually, was actually uh, Jesus' cousin. So Mary stayed with Elizabeth for three months, and while she was there, she sang this song. My soul magnifies the Lord. And my spirit rejoices in God, my Saviour, for he has looked with favour on the lowliness of his servant. Surely, from now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the mighty one has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him 
from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abram and to his descendants forever. I reckon Mary is an amazing person. She had great strength and determination and faith in God to, to follow what God was asking of her. And the words of her song that we heard, I think they're awesome. They tell of God's love and faithfulness to Mary. And they also, for me, they remind me of God's preference for people who are particularly poor and lowly, those who are in need. Mary's song is also a foretelling of what God was going to be doing through Jesus. So during our service, we'll get to hear the rest of Mary's story as she travels towards, as she travels towards Bethlehem. As you see, our nativity is almost complete. During the week, some, some extra people arrived. You see the Magi there over and they brought their gifts. And you see the animals getting a little bit closer and closer to the, to the manger in expectation of what will happen just a week from today. And I think that's awesome. Let's pray. Holy God, thank you for people like Mary, people who show us how to be faithful to you, people who show us how to trust in you, people to show us how to follow you. Help us, Lord, to be faithful as Mary was. Help us to trust you, Lord, as Mary did. Help us to follow you, Lord, like, like Mary. Amen. We're going to sing a song, and the song is called what child is this? So let's stand if we're able and sing. Thank you. Is this who lay to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping? Who angels greet with anthem sweet will share? Mary, 
You're gonna have what? I can't, I can't say good. Barry, you're gonna have a baby. I, you're gonna have a baby. You will call him Jesus. And then Mary will like, I'm not gonna have a baby yet. I'm only a teenager. I'm not married. Then the angel Gabriel told Joseph that Mary is not lying. She, you are having a new baby. Instant pregnancy, is that? <laughs> that's how it works. Let's come before God with our prayers of confession. Our God and Saviour, our holy friend, you bring down the arrogant and you lift up the fallen. Please deal with us according to our diverse needs, for the power of evil is pervasive and we need a Saviour. If we have filled our minds with vain imaginings, or puffed up our souls with pride. Confront us and decontaminate us, redeeming God. If we've openly professed you, yet inwardly preferred our own ideas and prejudices to your word, confront us and straighten us, redeeming God. If we have surrounded our lives with numerous possessions and have reaped insecurity and discontent, confront us and reclaim us, redeeming God. If we have spent so long among our own broken vows and failed visions that we have stopped caring about what you care for the most, confront us and deliver us, redeeming God. Merciful God, by your relentless compassion, expose our sins and deliver us from evil. Go to work on, on that shining likeness to Christ that is deep within us. And by your saving grace, restore us. Give us the faith to, to leave the past behind and to again name ourselves as your children. In the name of Christ Jesus, your true word. Amen. Do not burden yourselves with guilt. For God calls us out of fear and trembling and offers us love and liberty. Through Christ's saving grace, we can go on our way as forgiven people. Thanks be to God. So let's remain seated as we sing our next couple of, of carols, as we start with Silent Night.
Our first reading today is from the book of Luke, chapter 2, uh, verse 2, chapters 1 to 7. In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. And so they met up, they went to Bethlehem, which was Joseph's old town. They ride a donkey. <laughs> I don't know. A camel. Oh yeah, a camel. She said, this donkey's fast. Well, they tried to go to a hotel and they asked the keeper um, for a place to stay. The keeper said, we have no rooms. Literally, no rooms. <laughs> so Mary, and Joseph walked away sadly, but then he said, The only place in here in Bethlehem that, that you can stay, stay is a staple. And then he just pointed the way and they followed.
Luke chapter 2, verse 8 to 18. In that region there were shepherds living in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace among those whom he favours. When the angels had left, had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. When the shepherds were taking care of the sheep, then they saw angels. The angels said, a new baby is getting born, who is king of the Jews. The angels were singing. Glorious. And then the shepherds said, I think we should go there and meet him. The second, I think, said, yeah, I agree with you. And the other said, yeah, me too. They had to walk through a bunch of grass and bushes, maybe have to camp out a night.
reading from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at his rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are by no means least amongst the rulers of Judea. For from you shall come a ruler who is to be shepherd to my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out. And there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I then heard about it, and then a star appeared. We should probably follow that star. It's pointing down to the barn. So maybe we should follow it. Maybe. So the wise men went to Jesus. They gave them gifts. A stuffed animal, like a hippo one, to have at home. Some diapers, and <laughs> some wipes, and some milk, <laughs> some shoes, some Jordans. Gold, Frank, and Latimer. And I don't know how I would survive in that barn. Too stinky, too crowded, and ugh. I think he probably pooped because the room was very smelly. Thank you for coming. He's adorable. He's gonna be our best friend. I love you, and you're the best baby I ever seen. There, I said it. (laughs) The new baby is gonna change the world.
freely we have received, so let us freely give our offerings for the Lord. Holy God, it is a joy to come and hear the story of that first Christmas when you sent your son into the world to, to be born as a baby, but to grow and to bring us peace and love and joy and also to bring us forgiveness and grace and reconciliation with you. And so, Lord God, for the gift of your son, Jesus, we give you these gifts in return. Gifts of money and resources, but also the gifts of ourselves. And so, Lord God, we pray that you use these gifts and you use each one of us to share your story with all the world so that all may know of your love. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, man. Thank you, Rob. Thanks, everyone. Please be seated. Jeff, would you like to bring us our, our notices for today? Just a reminder that uh, there, uh, there is no uh, evening service this evening um, and our evening services uh, will resume on the 8th of January. Uh, but this evening on the veranda there is an opportunity to join in fellowship. Uh, so this evening at 5 o'clock uh, if you'd like to bring your own dinner uh, there's an opportunity to share in fellowship on the veranda this evening and that'll be followed by a family movie. As we continue to uh, remember those in need in our world, uh, there are still some Christmas bowl envelopes available uh, on the veranda this morning and still uh, a few copies left of the uh, Everything in Common gift catalogue from Uniting World. If you wish to contribute today to uh, Everything in Common, uh, then I can uh, look after that for you. Um, or you can take a copy of the catalogue with you. Uh, you can also contribute uh, online uh, at, on, at uh, their website. Those details are in Centenary Life, uh, or simply Google everything in common, the gift catalogue. And uh, weekly envelopes uh, for 2023 are available at the, at the door, uh, our weekly offering envelopes for those who like to use those. Uh, so grab uh, a bundle of those this morning. And uh, Christmas services. Uh, next Saturday is our Christmas Eve service at 7 pm, and uh, on Sunday morning, next Sunday morning, Christmas Day at 8:30 a.m.
So when I say, in your mercy, would you please respond with, hear our prayer. Let us pray. In the darkness, we wait for the coming of the light. In the darkness, when in the darkness, faith is formed, love takes shape and hope is born. With the world, we wait for your coming. Let us wait with the hungry, the homeless, the poor and the oppressed. Let us wait with the peoples of warring nations and for all of those who long for peace. Let us wait for all who carry heavy burdens of responsibility. Incarnate God, come to us in your wisdom, in justice and in peace, that we may rejoice at your presence. Come, Lord Jesus, come and in your mercy hear our prayer. With your church we wait for your coming. Let us wait open and receptive to your love. Let us wait aware of the quickening movements of life within. Let us wait ready to experience the pains of birth and the joy of new life. Incarnate God, come to us in wonder and in mystery that we may rejoice at your presence. Come Jesus, come and in your mercy hear our prayer. With the peoples of this city, we wait for your coming. Let us wait with our family and friends. Let us wait with those who are hurt, rejected and estranged. Let us wait with the unemployed and with those whom we, whom we find no room. Incarnate God, come to us in forgiveness, in reconciliation and in love, that we may rejoice at your presence. Come, Lord Jesus, come and in your mercy, hear our prayer. With those who suffer, we wait for your coming. Let us wait with the confused and the fearful. Let us wait with the lonely and the grief-stricken. Let us wait with those who are sick and those who are dying. And be with the friends and family of the two police officers and the man who came to help who were killed this week. Grant them the gift of your presence and your peace. Incarnate God, come to us in healing, in reassurance and in hope that those who suffer may rejoice at your presence. Come Jesus, come, and in your mercy, hear our prayer. With all your faithful servants, we wait for your coming. We give you thanks for all who have recognised your presence and for all who have opened themselves to your purpose and power, the prophets, John the Baptist, St. Joseph, and the Virgin Mary. Incarnate God, come to us that rejoicing at your presence, we may dwell forever with you and you with us. Come, Lord Jesus, come, and in your mercy, hear our prayer. And please join with me with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Let us stand and sing once more. Do you hear what I hear?
And so go with God's peace and with God's joy in your hearts out into the world to tell everyone what God has done and what God is doing through God's Son, Jesus. Amen. Let us turn to one another as we, as we share the Mispah benediction. May the Lord watch between me and thee whilst we're absent one from the other. Amen.